Hello everyone and welcome to the Skoda Fabia Super Mini. And I know what you're thinking, it doesn't sound like the most exciting car in the world. Well, hold your horses and put your preconceptions to one size because this is actually one of the best value for money cars you can currently buy. Based on the same platform as the VW Polo and Seat Ibiza, the Fabia aims to offer a value for money option without skimping too much on outright quality or space. In fact, the Fabia is one of the roomiest cars on sale today and should be high on the shopping list of anyone looking for TARDIS-like practicality. Before I get started on the review, however, please don't forget to subscribe to the Parker's Cars channel and turn your notifications on so you never miss another video. At the time of filming, the Skoda Fabia has a straightforward selection of engines, all of which are petrol and range from a 65 horsepower naturally aspirated 1 litre through to a 150 horsepower turbocharged variant available exclusively with a 6-speed DSG automatic gearbox. So one of the reasons that the Fabia comes in cheaper than the Ibiza and the Polo is because the cabin isn't quite as plush. You'll notice some cheaper feeling plastics dotted around and the design is erring more on the side of function rather than form. However, that doesn't mean it's nasty in here. It's far from it, actually. It just feels like you'd probably expect a small car to, whereas the Ibiza and the Polo are perhaps a level or two above. There's tons of space in here, even if you are quite tall, and the driving position is spot on with plenty of adjustment. Just bear in mind that if you want adjustable lumbar support on the front seats, you need to go for the SE Comfort trim or higher. And if you want an armrest, you need to get the SEL trim or higher. And also check this out, you've got actual dials for the heater, the air conditioning and the climate control, which is fantastic because it means you don't have to go into the screen to just make things a little bit cooler. But then the more detailed settings are in the screen, but we'll get onto that in a second. This particular Fabia is fairly highly specced in the SEL trim, and that means you get the 9.2 inch infotainment screen. If you go for some of the lower spec Fabias, you get a 6.5 inch infotainment screen, which is obviously a lot smaller, and it also doesn't come with built-in sat-nav. However, the Fabia comes as standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So even if you don't have the sat-nav fitted to the car, you can just use the mapping software on your phone and it will be better than the Fabia's own navigation system. And actually, this car has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto fitted, and it's also got a wireless phone charger, so you don't even need to plug the phone in to get the CarPlay and the Android Auto functionality. However, if you're going to do a longer journey, I would recommend plugging it in because you might find that the charger can't charge the phone up fast enough to offset the loss in battery from using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. So longer journey, you're using the functionality, just plug it in, it's easier. Going back to the infotainment system, and you've got these nice shortcuts down the side, which are great because you can go to menu, you can go to home, phone, nav, car, that sort of thing. And the screen itself is very clear and bright. It can sometimes be a bit laggy. It's all right now, but it can be a bit laggy when you're doing more in-depth tasks. And also, when you go through to a menu shortcut, it doesn't always then give you the menu options that you think you're going to get. So the UI could be improved. And hopefully that won't count against me when we do Hope's Car Olympics later on. You can also get the virtual cockpit digital dashboard, try saying that five times fast, on this car, either as an option like we've got here or a standard on the color edition or Monte Carlo models. And although it looks nice and premium because all expensive cars now have screens instead of dials. I've got to say that it's not as good as a full fat Audi virtual cockpit system. So to be honest, you're probably just better off saving your money if it's not coming as standard on the trim level that you want to go for. Meanwhile, storage space in the Fabia is pretty much as good as the passenger space because there's tons of cubby holes and pockets where you can put all of your odds and ends. So up front here, there's a place for your phone and there's the wireless phone charger there, which is optional on this car. 
decent space underneath the armrest if you've got that fitted. Hidden cubby here, big door pockets, massive glove box. I mean, check that out. It is absolutely huge in there. And also a couple of cup holders and a place to put some change there. I mean, you could honestly lose things very easily in this car. Finally, I'm also a fan of lots of the nice hidden little touches on this car, which is supposed to make your life easier. And they're part of Skoda's simply clever features. So there's a USB-C point up near the rear view mirror, which I assume is there for your dash cams. You don't have to have the wire trailing down. There's also a ice scraper in the fuel filler cap. And you've also got an umbrella hidden in the door in case the weather comes over all British. I mean, that's a very very good idea. As alluded to earlier, the Fabia comes in a range of trim levels. The cheapest is S, then SE Comfort, SEL, Color Edition and Monte Carlo. All models get standard equipment including LED headlights, a DAB radio, central locking and aircon, with the number of gadgets quickly increasing as you go up through the trim levels. Climbing into the back of the Fabia, and I reckon you'll be pleasantly surprised with just how much space there is back here. There's more than enough room for two full-sized adults, and although three might be a little bit of a push, it is still possible on short journeys. You've got lots of knee room, foot room, and headroom, even with this optional panoramic roof. And actually, if you had the previous Fabia, or if you ever rode in the previous Fabia, then that was a very roomy car, but this has got an extra 94 millimeters between the front and the rear wheels. So that's quite a big, big difference. And you really feel it when you're sitting here. There's also neat touches, such as a couple of very useful air vents to keep it cool back here, and also some pockets on the back of the front seats. Finally, Isofix points. You've got one on the outer rear seat, one on the other outer rear seat, and also one on the front passenger seat. So you've got three Isofix points in what is actually quite a small car. Boot space is the Fabia's party piece. It boasts a ginormous 380 litres of capacity. That's 50 litres more than the old Fabia and the same volume as the far more expensive VW Golf. You can also get additional features such as netting and handy boot storage compartments, as well as hooks for your shopping bags. Alternatively, cars fitted with the Comfort Package Basic get an emergency spare wheel and variable height boot floor. So we've come to the part of the video where we usually do something called Hope's Car Olympics. It's a usability test where you have to fold the rear seats down, tune the radio into absolute FM and set the sat nav to Buckingham Palace. And it's usually done by our presenter, Hope Helen. Unfortunately, she's not very well today, so I've had to step in and I'll be doing Hope's Car Olympics. So. Wish me luck, it's my first time. Right, countdown. Go, right, okay, I've got to go into the back seats to fold the seats down, as you can't do it from the boot. Go around here, fold this down here, and then they're down. That was really, really easy. Now into the driver's seat. Ignore the beeping, it's quite annoying, but it has that on all modern cars. We go to the radio, and then we can go to station list. Really simple. It's alphabetical, absolute radio, bang, nav, quickly. Oh dear, what is, what is it doing? It comes up, when you go to nav, it comes up with this really weird screen. It's not what you'd expect. Uh, where's the menu? No, it's not there. Oh dear, this is a bit, oh, there it is, right. So, Buckingham, there we go. Buckingham Palace Monument, start, come on, come on and we're ready. So that wasn't too bad at all. The rear seat's super easy to fold down, two little levers and you're done. Really easy. The only way it could have been easier if I could have done it from the boot, but that's fine as it is. Radio, again, super simple. The sat nav, it does a weird thing where you click on the nav and then it gives you something which doesn't actually resemble the map. It just shows you like a circle with lots of other circles and where you've been, which isn't helpful. But then once I'd got to Buckingham Palace and the enter the POI, it was pretty good. So I don't know, I'll give it a seven or eight out of 10. Good efforts, Skoda. So the Fabia I'm driving here has a one litre, 110 horsepower petrol engine and a six speed 
manual gearbox. And if you're the kind of person that does a lot of motorway driving, this is a great choice. That's because it's got plenty of go and also has the added benefit of a sixth gear, which not every car in the range has, and that's perfect for motorway cruising. You can get a DSG automatic six-speed gearbox, which is pretty good, but actually, I wouldn't bother. The manual is really nice and easy to use, slick changes, and is obviously a little bit cheaper. Moving on to comfort, and the Fabia is one of the best riding small cars out there. It absorbs the majority of bumps and ruts, and even at high speed delivers a respectable ride. Cars with larger 17 and 18 inch wheels are the firmest, but they're still more comfortable than many rivals. Another thing that I've noticed is that the soundproofing really does seem to have been improved over the previous generation Fabia because there's less wind noise, there's less road noise, and there's also less engine noise as well. So while you still get that quite nice and characterful offbeat three-cylinder warble, it doesn't feel too intrusive. So you can go on a long drive and still feel very relaxed at the other end, which for a car this size is brilliant. The flip side of this impressive comfort is that the Fabia isn't the most exciting car to drive, and it doesn't have that same handling magic as, say, the Renault Clio or the Ford Fiesta. Yes, there's plenty of grip and you won't feel unsafe in it, but it rolls into corners and the steering doesn't have as much life or feel. However, when it comes to low speed handling, such as around town, it's extremely easy to drive and it's also very simple to park, mainly due to the big windows and the small, thin pillars. And also, if that's not enough, on SE Comfort trim upwards, you get rear parking sensors fitted as standard. If you're looking to buy a Skoda Fabia, but you're not quite sure which one to go for, then here's our top three choices. For the cheapest one available, you want the S-Spec 65 horsepower naturally aspirated car. And it's the same story, actually, if you're a company car driver. But just bear in mind that if you do lots of motorway miles, you'll probably want a slightly more powerful engine, such as the one we have here, which is the 110 horsepower model. Finally, if you want a hot hatch, a fast version of the Fabia, then sadly the VRS version no longer exists, but you can get the Monte Carlo spec in 150 horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol form, and that is plenty fast enough. The Skoda Fabia is a brilliant small car that delivers space, equipment, and comfort in a well-priced, inoffensive package that'll no doubt appeal to a broad spectrum of customers. So this might not be the fanciest or the most expensive car that I've ever driven, but it doesn't make it any less impressive. It's so, so easy to drive, yet it often feels like a bigger car, chiefly because of the amount of space in here and how smooth and refined the overall drive is. If it was my money, I'd get the SEL trim with either the 95 or 110 horsepower one litre petrol engine and make sure that I spec the winter package, the comfort plus package and the safety package.